So let's have a look at common autonomic nervous system loops. So here's our map of the nervous system from which we get the window of capacity. Now for some of us, our nervous systems are stuck in sympathetic. We're stuck in the drive to protect through action. And so for some of us, there's a familiarity of what other people may consider to be hyperarousal or hypervigilance. And our nervous system can rest, but only for so long. And then we're back into the territory that is most familiar, most safe, most comfortable for us. For others of us, we're stuck in dorsal. We're stuck in the drive to conserve energy. So we're more comfortable living at the lower edges of our window of capacity and we can manage to get energy together to be able to move through the world or do that thing and then as soon as that thing is done, let me go back to what is familiar and safe and comfortable for me. And it can be perceived by other people as someone who doesn't have much energy, someone who's not exciting, not fun, not much going on there. For some of us, we ricochet between survival states, between hyperarousal and hypoarousal. Go, 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 pass out. Go, 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 pass out. Yeah. For others of us, we're stuck in the drive to feel alive without feeling overwhelmed. And I saw this commonly during my time working in addiction recovery, that my nervous system is going up. Perhaps I'm experiencing a trauma trigger that makes me want to leave the window, or perhaps it's just simply too much energy in my nervous system. I've got too much going on, and I use something outside of me to help my nervous system to calm down. There might be a trauma trigger that causes me to be pulled down, yeah? Or it might be just not enough going on for me to feel that feeling of aliveness. And so I use something in order to bring myself back into the window. And when it comes to addiction recovery, what I learned to appreciate is that addiction is also not feeling the emotions that I would do anything to not feel ever again. And so the whiff of the sniff of anything that may be reminiscent of hashtag hyperarousal, I use a downer, anything that's reminiscent of hashtag numb, defeat, feign death, powerlessness, I use an upper. And yet with polydrug use, what happens over time is the window becomes more and more narrow as our hedonic threshold shifts. And for some of us, we don't use substances, we go to behaviours to try and keep ourselves feeling alive without feeling overwhelmed. Everything makes sense within the context of the environment that that person has been living in. And now if we pull these autonomic nervous system loops forward... I'm in a therapy office with a therapist and a therapist asks, what are you noticing in your body? And if there is secondary or tertiary structural dissociation of the personality, if there are many parts going on, then I might have a part that's saying, whoa, 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 you're t we're going too fast. You're asking me too many questions at too fast a pace. I'm starting to withdraw because it took me so much energy to turn up for this appointment. And then I've got another part that says, mm, come on, let's fix this thing. Get to the heart of my problems. You, you need to ask me more diagnostic questions so that we can actually really figure out what's going on. And another part of me is triggered in the moment. I'm going back and forth between hyper and hypoarousal and perhaps my going on with normal life part is doing its darndest to try and keep everything within a manageable nervous system state that is acceptable to the other person. Learning about autonomic nervous system loops helped me to have compassion 
for my clients because I don't know what's going on in their bodies, in their nervous systems and the ways in which they're going on with normal life part or their front part, their imposter part, their mask, whatever you wish to call it, is trying so very hard, yeah? And so to, to reframe regulation and to reframe safety as I'm providing a space that is safe enough for someone to be dysregulated, yeah? And to not shame that dysregulation. And maybe perhaps this is the purpose of me doing my own nervous system work, is so that other nervous systems can turn up in the space as they are. So questions for consideration for us as therapists, right? That recognition that our nervous system is shaped by our environment. And that's also my environment, my colleagues, you know, my structural environment, my home environment, what's happening geopolitically in the world. And I know that when there's a lot going on in my external environment, I really would like things to be more calm in any area of my life that I can make possibly calm. Yeah. And so to just name that, to name what we're bringing into our spaces. There's an the invitation to notice which of these common autonomic nervous system loops may be familiar for you. What is familiar terrain for you? Where do you prefer to live? Or conversely, you know, which of these autonomic nervous systems are familiar for you in terms of your family of origin, your family of choice, your friends, as well as your professional communities? What's that saying? Trait becomes state, becomes identity, becomes culture. Yeah. Trait becomes state, becomes identity, becomes culture. And it's common to see in certain professional communities, for example, the emergency department, that the common autonomic nervous system loop is one that functions very successfully at the upper edges of the window and there's the autonomic nervous system loop up there. Yeah, go hard, work hard, play hard. Mm -hmm. I also invite you to notice if there are any autonomic nervous system mismatches between you and your clients, as well as other people in your life, and to notice whether there are, there are any autonomic nervous system mismatches that are happening within couples therapy or within family therapy. It's been my experience that the individuals whom I've worked with who identify as the scapegoat in their family have a very different autonomic nervous system to the dominant autonomic nervous system loop of the family system. I invite you to notice the autonomic nervous system loops that you gravitate towards, as well as the ones that are aversive to you. And as you begin to map your nervous system, to let this be clues or signs in terms of areas of the map for you that may perhaps hold uh, traumatic events that are worth becoming aware of. Even if you're not aware of those events, becoming aware that, as an example, my nervous system has historically been more comfortable in hyperarousal. And that's because powerlessness, helplessness, hopelessness of dorsal is a terrain that I do not want to experience ever again, and yet my clients turn up in these spaces with their nervous system. And then this adds another layer of nuance in terms of somatic transference and counter-transference, which I want to offer and prime you with right now. However, we will unpack that together in the fourth module of this series. In our next segment, we'll unpack how the state of your autonomic nervous system drives your story of the world, and then we'll pull that information forward and combine that with Janina Fisher's TIST model.